On the table today feels like we are in need of an activity. We have a Dan and Darcy dig a dozen gem blocks. Break open the block to find the real gem inside. <laughs> well, the squirrel fell asleep, but the Treasure X Aliens Hunter is excited. Squirrel Stampede! Twenty twenty! Please squike! Inside the box, just like you would expect, a dozen blocks to dig open, each with a different stone. Have you ever heard of soda light? How about howlite or unikite? Discover these beautiful, colorful, real gems and others as you dig through this kit. If you want, you can even share the fun with siblings or friends. And there we go, many of the gems we will discover inside these blocks. Inside we have 12 digging tools for the 12 blocks. We have cards that correspond to each rock that we will find. And now, it's already time to begin. I believe they're numbered even. This is block one. Here we go. Okay then, let's start by getting our water out. And going bloop. Okay, that sunk faster than 30 seconds. Very similar to Treasure X blocks from before. Just kind of waiting for it to soften up a little bit. Alright, I would say we soaked enough. And we can begin our first dig. Our small little chisel brush tool will begin. Breaking apart pretty easy so far. That's good to know. Somewhere inside. Squirrel down, squirrel down. Might be right up on top, there it is. Okay, our first stone. Anybody recognize it? Looks a little spotty. Is that the Dalmatian one? Interesting. Let's clean it up. Yes, I believe we have found Dalmatian Jasper. Very interesting to start with. We have our Dalmatian Jasper bio card. Dalmatian Jasper is another name for Dalmatian stone and is actually the wrong name. You see, true Jasper is made up of a few specific ingredients, and while this gem looks like Jasper and probably fooled many people years ago, it's made up of different materials, like little bits of quartz, which make it officially a rock, not a gem. See, you can occasionally learn some things on Squirrel Stampede. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty fun first block adventure. We'll move on to block two now. And that's probably enough deep sea diving for now. Find a chisel tool and begin our dig. Ooh, it's red. Let's go look this one up. This one must be Red Jasper. Very nice, it's so deep, rusty red. The Red Jasper bio card says, There are many kinds of Jasper, which means speckled stone in Old French. People in the ancient world loved to polish Jasper as jewelry and vases. They also used Jasper for signet rings, carving tiny marks in the stone and then pressing it onto wax or clay as a distinctive way of signing their names. Wow, and there it is one more time. Now we can go on to block number three. And to make things a little more interesting, I'm going to have my special correspondence work on block six and block eight. Three goes in for a drink. Okay, what do we find here? Feels like they're often on the top and I already found it right there. Ooh, that one's kind of nice. Hmm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is rhodonite. It's kind of a more pinkish with a little bit of brown striped through it. Rhodonite is a very rare mineral found only in small amounts around the world. It is usually pink or red, and many years ago it was mined in India to be used in making chemicals for industry. In the U.S., it's found in North Carolina, New Jersey, and Colorado, and it's also the state gem of Massachusetts. Yeah, that sounds like what we have here. There's kind of an unpolished image of it. Very pretty stone. Whoop. 
Well, so far, Dig a Dozen has been a pretty fun activity. Let's move on to block four. And beginning the excavation. I'm going to try right at the top this time. And there I think it is. I wonder if they like float. Well, rocks don't float, so I guess maybe they're formed like this. In factory, the rock goes down to the bottom inside the uh, rock core. But there we go. It's kind of neat just digging it out from the top. A little cleaner. This is the first time I might want to try the little brush tool. If you want to slow up the experience. It's really kind of stuck in there. Bigger than I thought. There it is. What is this one? Anyone got an idea before we find out? I guess. This one's really stuck in there. That's funny. I thought, oh, going from the top, it'll be easy. There we go. Ah, finally. Much larger, much deeper than I thought. Ooh, very interesting. Very interesting stone. And here we have what I am pretty sure guessing as sodalite. It is a little bit of a lighter blue with a little bit of white. This is really an interesting stone here. A nice square cut cube of sodalite. Though it sounds like the names of a diet cola, sodalite is actually a rare rock-forming mineral named in reference to its sodium content and best known for its blue to blue-violet color. Some rocks containing a lot of sodalite can be polished to a beautiful shine and are strong enough for a variety of uses. For these reasons, and especially for its blue color, sodalite is a valued gem as an ornamental stone and as a building material. And over here we have an unpolished block of sodalite. And I'm pretty sure it is. Obviously, as we go along, and if we find something way different, then we'll know for sure. I think this block has the ancient five etched into the base. And a five to see you. go. This one is very interesting. It's got a lot of lines going through it. Let's clean this off. This is actually getting really challenging trying to identify some of these. They do not look exactly like their picture all the time. This one has got amazing line work going through it. And I think all those lines would say that this one should be a Persian Gulf agat. At first, agats look like plain boring rocks, but they are not. They just need to be cut open to show their beauty. Inside are dozens of colored layers that look like rings of a tree trunk. Because a specific mix of minerals cause the layers, each region of the world has different colored agats. This image does not really do the justice of what we have here. Here we have a nice split open agat. And that's where I think that is what we have. Okay, let's now check in with our first correspondent, geologist, benyologist, rock smasher, the fifth. Ben begins by dunking the gem block into water to soften it up. He waits for a few moments, singing happy birthday in his head ten times. It is now time to dig. A K? I made a lowercase K. He made a lowercase K. Now for some precision digging. The side is kind of the best because it's not too hard, not too, too easy. It's not too hard, not too easy. So, it's kind of awkward-ish. Now for some precision digging with the brush. Ben indicating he may have found Amazonite. I think it might be this one. This one, okay, let's look at that card. So Benny may have found Amazonite. Microcline is the real name for this common though not well known bright green mineral. It has been used as a semi precious stone under the names Amazonite and Perthite. Amazonite is a variety that is deep green and suitable for carving and polishing. Thank you, geologist Benny, for your help. All right, we're quickly moving along. Let's try out block number seven. Where is this one? 
Oops, scroll down. Aha, finally, there it is. I believe we found the mineral howlite. It's quite white, gray, black, howlite. Howlite is white with gray markings that looks sort of like a spider web. It was first identified in 1868 in Nova Scotia by a geologist named Henry Howe. It usually shows up in blobs that look like cauliflower rather than as crystals. Watch out because this mineral is a trickster. It is often dyed to look like other more valuable gems. Well, I think this one is a sure cut identified as howlite. Now let's check in with our second correspondent, Professor Anna, Diamond Rock Spotter the Rainbow One. She begins by also softening the gem block in water. Now she is using the old technique, poke the gem block with a digging tool trick. <gasps> the gem block has insulted her. Now she fell asleep. Okay, time to dig. It's the garbage man. Ooh, it's really like this. I think I got it's look at that. I just smashed Ooh. it just like rubbed it right here and yeah. that's what I already found it. Obsidian? Yeah, I want it. I want it. Snowflake that. obsidian. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yes. There you go. Oh, this is so dirty. I have to wash it. Okay, so we are pretty sure Anna has found... Snowflake Obsidian. Snowflake Obsidian! Snowflake Obsidian! Obsidian is a kind of glass created when volcanic lava comes in contact with the water. This process produces a glassy texture in the resulting rock. The iron and magnesium in the lava give the obsidian a dark green to black color. Obsidian is incredibly strong and therefore was used by ancient people as a cutting tool for weapons and for ceremonial purposes. When bubbles in the rock create white clustered crystals, it is called snowflake obsidian. Okay, thanks much, Professor Anna. And it's block nine time. All right then, digging into nine. Whoa, we may finally have an answer to the blue gemstone mineral debate. Okay, so here's what we have found cleaned up, and I am 100% sure that this is lapis lazuli. There's our card. Lapis lazuli is a valuable gemstone made from a mixture of minerals and famous for its brilliant blue color. Although it was used widely in ancient times to carve beautiful jewelry and sculptures, it was most often ground into powder for paint and dye for cloth and cosmetics. So yeah, I'm 100% sure that's lapis lazuli. That still holds my belief that this one was the sodalite. And this one here, the amazonite. And now for our 10th gem block, number 10. Fresh from the pond. Something there. Could it be? What could it be? It's orange in color, I believe. And there it is. Fascinating. Let's clean her up. Pretty sure we have found orange calcite. It's really smooth and orangey. Orange calcite. Calcite is the common white marble frequently used in buildings. As a matter of fact, the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. is made up of calcite marble, as are the ancient pyramids in Egypt. It's found easily all around the world and is the main ingredient in limestone and other marble. So really good to see this one. Nice and easy to identify. Block 11 might be the prettiest gem block around. It's kind of a purpley blue. Interesting. Ooh, Tranquil. Tranquil pretty blue. I don't want to dig this one out. I want to become its friend. Well, I'll just go easy on- <gasps> Okay, what do we got? Let's see here. Give it some extra drink time. I think it's really squishy. By the way, how many squirrels have fallen over today? It's pretty intense. Oh, once again, it's up top. What is this? 
Are we going to have another gemstone controversy, or is it something we're going to be able to identify pretty quickly? This is interesting. What is this? Here we go again. Okay, it took me a minute of intense observation, but I believe we have found Unakite. Or is that Unakitty? Unakite, maybe. Now this thing is bright green with a little bit of pink. Not too much pink in my sample, just tiniest little spot right in there. There's some pink. And for the Unakite card, this fun gemstone has bright contrasting colors. Pistachio green from a mineral called Epidote, and a vivid pink from Orthoclast. Its name comes from the Unica Mountain Range in North Carolina and Tennessee. Una Unikite is very easy to cut and polish and so is used for decorating large areas where marble is too expensive, such as for flooring tiles, window sills, stairs, and other architectural surfaces. Because it is so inexpensive, it is also found often in the form of beads and craft jewelry. Very interesting. This must be our final gem block. And if we have identified correctly, I believe it's going to be this one right there, however you say it. Time for the last ceremonial soaking. And here we go. Last time. Oh, how special. Right from the top. There we go, and it is purple in color, so I think we have indeed correctly identified everything, but we'll clean it up and make sure. All cleaned up, and I will pronounce it as amethyst. I think that is correct. It is a really awesome gem block to finish off with. It's got some transparent features to it. You can kind of see through it in certain light, and it is very purpley. A little bit gray, a little bit white here and there, and it is quite interesting to look at. And our info card! Amethyst is the purple color variety of quartz. It is the most popular purple gem and one of the most popular gemstones of all time. We even use the word amethyst to describe a color like we do with grape or plum. We do? But not all amethysts are the same shade. While often they are a deep, dark purple, some are so barely purple that you can hardly see color. Then how would you know it's even there? Like Kramer's sliced turkey. But if you're not a fan of purple, no problem. Heating an amethyst will turn it greenish yellow. Well, there you go. What a finish. Definitely top three out of the stones we pulled today, I would say. Fascinating. And there we have the 12 different stones undug from the dozen gem blocks, all now correctly identified. I would say the most challenging ones were sodalite, the lapis, and the amazonite. But now that they are all out next to cards, I'm pretty sure with 100% squirrel accuracy, we've got it. What a fun and awesome kit Dig a Dozen can be! I've been looking at these for quite some time. There are several different other options from Dan and Darcy. These are STEM authenticated, perfect activity for everyone. Really interesting, colorful, and awesome gemstones. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Quickly, I